There should not be involvement from the federal government in how states decide their abortion decisions. As a physician, I've been in the room when there's some difficult conversations happening. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders. Contrast that with my opponent, John Fetterman, who on this debate stage said that he would demand federally mandated rules for all states they have to follow that would allow abortion at 38 weeks on the delivery table. But if you believe that the choice for abortion belongs between you and your doctor, that's what I fight for. The debate last night between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz had a couple of fireworks here and there. In fact, the one bad line, it seemed like it hit badly for Dr. Oz was lines about which politicians, at least political leaders or local politicians should be involved in a woman's decision about her body and her life. Weird how that works. But the real headlines came from John Fetterman's, I guess many people said inability to get his point across in many cases, answer questions clearly, a little bit of confusion in some of those answers as well. So we're gonna dive into all of that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started because there's lots to this. I feel like it's layered and there's, and there's ways this could be talked about that's different than what some folks are. So again, John Fetterman, as we know, suffered that stroke a few months back, has been talking about the technology that he's using in order to be able to understand maybe sentences that are said to him and also respond accordingly. All that stuff was talked about and used in many times negatively, but we saw it on the stage last night. Let's watch what went down with Fetterman. And let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke, he's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm gonna keep coming back up. And this campaign is all about, to me, is about fighting for everyone in Pennsylvania that ever got knocked down. That needs to get back up and fighting for all forgotten communities all across Pennsylvania that also got knocked down, that needs to keep get back up. Thank you very much. But you have not released your detailed medical records surrounding your stroke. Mr. Fetterman, will you pledge tonight to release those records? If my doctor believes that I'm fit to serve, and, and that's what I believe is appropriate. And now with two weeks before the election, you know, I have run a campaign and I've been very transparent about being very open about the fact we're in use captioning. And I believe that again, my doctors, the real doctors that I believe in, they all believe that I'm ready to be served. So there was a couple moments there, as you saw some of the answers didn't fully make the right grammatical sense. Uh, maybe even some of the, the, the specific question about fracking uh, that everyone's also talking about was a bit of a contradiction to things that he's said in the past. And it makes people wonder, is he ready? Is he cognitive ready? Has the stroke uh, um, uh, affected him to the point where this is gonna be a problem if he's in office? We know that's the question. As a matter of fact, Sharon, we're gonna get to more because um, I think there's a slant that gets taken here. And as we saw this happening, um, there's people on conservative outlets like Newsmax that wanna bring this up as something as if people are protecting John Fetterman. We'll get to that in a second, but first, just this discussion that we're having, or at least I guess people have it on social media and all these other outlets. Is this a disqualifying type of thing, at least in your mind, from seeing this type of performance? It, no, is the quick answer. Mm -hmm. The longer answer is, I don't like perfect people. I like flawed people. I like people who have faced challenges and you know climbed out of it. They've been in the trenches, whatever metaphor you want to use. He's in a fight with his body, perhaps his mind. I am concerned. I'm not a doctor. The way Dr. Oz has behaved in some ways, he may <laughs> no longer be okay. But I, I don't know if his inability to recall can be put in the cognitive bucket. It may not be, it may just be about the grammatical challenges, um, misusing words, that whole thing. But there, there were issues there, but there were also issues with Oz. And I gotta tell you something, stroke or no stroke. When you get on a stage like that, and I'm talking like I've been in a debate like this, I've not. But you and I, we both played to some bigger audiences and someone starts dinging a bell and then you have a screen and then you have people asking you these questions. Then you got somebody over here doing this. All of that context is everything. So I, I don't know. Um, the, the easy answer is no, it's not disqualifying. But there are, if we're just being honest, there are concerns. 
It's a matter of whether or not then it transitions over to the job. Okay, so uh, yeah. the ability to, to speak with the grammatical correctness and everything like that in response to questions like this. How does that transfer into doing the job, putting together bills, being co-signers on things, being able to debate topics and all the stuff that you do in office, right? Um, and. Obviously, as we're having this conversation now, I mentioned there's some right wing outlets that want to pose this not only as the problem with Fetterman potentially, but also the problem with the media and trying to cover for him. Because we see this all the time when it comes to a candidate that has issues, let's keep it real, Herschel Walker, and all the things that came out about him in the way conservative media tried anything they could to cover and act like what we're seeing isn't what we're seeing. So Rick Santorum went over on Newsmax and he tried to make that point. Let's watch that. Uh, John Fetterman simply should not have been on that stage. He uh, was not capable to form uh, uh, sentences and deliver a message that is at all comprehensive. The news coverage barely mentions the fact that that uh, uh, that Fetterman was uh, having any real difficulties. I mean, they mentioned, oh, he's, he had trouble forming words and things like that. He didn't have trouble forming words, he had trouble forming thoughts. So as you saw at the back end of there, Rick Santorum wants to point out that the the media is not gonna uh, is covering for this guy. They're not gonna point out that how horrible this was and devastating everything was as far as this goes. Uh, there's this whole uh, leftist media that they talk about over on MSNBC. In fact, the flagship morning show is called Morning Joe. Maybe you guys have heard of him. His name is Joe Scarborough. Uh, he and his panel were talking about this. Keep in mind what Rick Santorum just said versus what then the Morning Joe crew was talking about. Watch. Uh, and then you had, of course, Fetterman, who's who's struggling. Uh, he's he's struggling with the effects of a stroke that uh, he suffered in May. Um, and you know, I said it's it's very obvious that he is impaired. His ability to communicate is impaired. I think uh, the overwhelming takeaway that I heard, and I think this is a, a fair uh, a fair thing to say, is people are questioning why he went into this debate, why he did this debate. Now, of course, if he didn't do this debate, Joe, it would have probably raised more questions. I remember Dasha Burns getting in trouble a couple weeks ago with, with people on the left and even some mainstream voices saying that he had trouble with small talk. Well, that was very obvious last night. It's very obvious last night he said that. Now, by the way, there's a couple more headlines too uh, here, Sharon, because from Axios, this is the headline, Fetterman's painful debate. Not only that, but also over on Politico, they said Fetterman struggles during TV debate with Oz. Everyone saw it, everyone was understanding what was going on. It's a matter of whether or not you think this will transition over to be a problem. By the way, last thought on this from me at least, Sharon. The whole idea of continuing to make sure that you tell your followers that the media is after you, the media is coming for us, the media is still lying. Even when obviously that's not really the case, is to make sure that anytime there's any factual fact checking, any actual reporting over people like who Rick Santorum might be supporting. They want to make sure that anyone else in the general voting audience that supports them doesn't believe a word of it. That's why we have so much of the interaction or this debate about reality versus fakeness. Because they've been told if you hear something that sounds bad about our candidates, it's just fake news. Who was saying that for four straight years again? It's just how these things work. Yeah. I gotta tell you, context again is everything. Look what we're talking about here, okay? Fracking, what is his position? Abortion, what is Oz's position? Exactly. All we're talking about is this man's health, okay? My mother's had stroke. Lots of people have mm -hmm. stroke and they're able to function. I don't know if the timing's gonna align for Fetterman. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But you're absolutely right. If they just keep repeat, it's like a mantra. Just keep repeating it over and over again, and suddenly it's true. Suddenly it's true.